Our subject this morning is the mark of the beast. That is the Antichrist. Our scriptures will be taken from Revelation 13 and Revelation 14. Three verses from each. Beginning with Revelation 13, 16. Shall we stand together please for the reading of God's Word. <coughs> the scriptures are printed in your bulletin. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And no man I call himself, save he that has a mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding Count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment is shut up forever and ever, and they have no rest there not, who worship the beast in his image and the beast worship the beast in his image. And the beast Thank you. Be seated, please. Our subject this morning is the mark of the beast. This is a reference to an individual, a man, called the Antichrist. And it tells us what he will do. He will become a worldwide dictator and all the cities and countries of the world will be under his dominion. And he will brand with a mark all the people in the world that are left behind after the rapture of the church. Those that are unsaved and left behind will take the mark of the beast during the great tribulation period described in the book of Revelation. There are many types of the Antichrist throughout the scriptures. I will just name a few of them. Cain is a type of the Antichrist. Lamech, Nimrod, Shedelair, Pharaoh, Abimelech, King Saul, Goliath, Absalom, King Herod. These men were all antitypes. They were pictures of the Antichrist himself. The Antichrist is found in John's writings in the Word of God. And we saw in the book of Revelation how a beast arose up out of the sea. Now the sea here refers to the nations. Always remember that unless it's a literal sea, it's referring to nations. So he comes up out of the nations. He is a man. He is the most despicable man that ever lived. He is a bloodthirsty son of Satan. And he comes on the scene to kill and plunder and murder all who will not subscribe to his rule. He is symbolized as a beast because that's his nature. And he has ten horns, each wearing a crown speaking of authority. He has seven heads. That means he has support of ten nations and he will bring them under his control. This is the ten nation federated nations of Europe. The Roman government. His body looks like a panther or a leopard. 
speaking of the swiftness with which he will overcome the world. His feet are like a bear's feet. The bear speaks of power. And his mouth is like the mouth of a lion. That is, he will devour all who oppose him. And this is a description symbolically of this man called the Antichrist who I believe is probably alive in the world today. Somewhere in the Middle East or in the Roman Empire, there was a baby born, a son of Satan. And this man is called the Antichrist. And he will put his mark upon every unsaved person in the tribulation period. Let's consider the names of this man who's called the beast. Here is wisdom. Verse 18. Let him that understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. God is declaring here that this individual, known as a beast, is actually a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. He is the devil incarnate. Now there are seven things I want to show you about the Antichrist. Seven facets. Here's a person who will be the world's first true superman. Before him will fall Alexander the Great, Napoleon, Hitler, Stalin. They pale into insignificance as great conquerors compared to this man. During World War I, the German treasury was low on gold. Her budget was unbalanced. Inflation was sky high. In 1919, the German mark was worth 25 cents in U.S. coin. Within four years, it declined in value until four trillion marks were needed to equal one dollar in buying power. That's inflation. The value of every pension was wiped out. All security was gone. And the people were ready to listen to anyone who could lead them out of their bitter lot. Enter Adolf Hitler. Someday the Antichrist will explore the world's shaky economic conditions and all social turmoil to his political advantage. Now these were but mere shadows of the coming event. He will be the real thing. His every action will affect every living being upon the face of the earth. He is Satan's man of the hour. And there is nowhere to run. There is nowhere to hide. You cannot get away from him if you're down here in the tribulation period. And there is only one way of escape from this awful period under which this man will rule the world. And it wouldn't do any good to run to America or the UK or France or Germany or anywhere else because every nation and every city will be under his power and authority. You can't hide from him. Let's look at seven pictures of the Antichrist as he's presented in the Bible. First of all, he will be a politician par excellence. A dictator does not simply rule and declare himself a dictator over a nation. He has to start with the people's sufferings. He has to find a niche where he can get in and stir up discontent. He must offer simplistic solutions to the people in their misery. And he has to rally the people around him, exalting their weaknesses and their troubles, and bringing himself to power. This is how Adolf Hitler rose to power in Germany. He will be a politician like we've never seen before. Secondly, he will be a governmental witness, a genius. He will weld together opposing forces. He will unify conflicting agencies. Under his compelling power, he will bring the nations together. He will unify the nations. And there will be a unified world church and a world government 
and a world monetary system and without his authority and without his mark on your body you cannot buy or sell a loaf of bread or a scrap of food he will be a governmental genius the dream of the United Nations will be fulfilled although it's a diabolical dream he will be thirdly an economic genius he will take over the world's economy and cause craft through his policy Daniel tells us that he will prosper everything will be nationalized food will be nationalized jobs will be nationalized none will be able to buy or sell without his permission the wealth of the world will be at his disposal in Daniel 11 and verse 43 he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt in other words he will confiscate all silver and gold all commerce will be under his personal control and used for his own aggrandizement all of this is in his hands then he will wield the scepter of financial power we read in revelation 13 16 he calls them all to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark and his number is 603 score and six now everybody will have to take his mark or be beheaded everything will be rationed and only those that have the mark will be able to buy in the raging heaving sea of humanity the chaotic condition of the world in a day of crisis and revolution will give him a niche that he can step through and control the world out of the world's chaos will arise these dictators out of the turmoil of the french revolution came napoleon out of the vast revolution of the labor movement came lenin and marxism of russia and out of the upheaval in germany came adolf hitler see these dictators they look for a place of discontent among the population and then they insert their own lying promises to those people and once they are in control with their police state they put the mark of the beast upon the forehead or the right hand of the people without that mark they cannot buy a loaf of bread in the grocery store not only that but in the fourth place he's a military genius he will control a 10 nation European group I believe that will include America he begins by controlling the Western power block there are 10 nations that he will take over and rule Revelation 17 12 and the 10 horns which thou sawest are 10 kings which have received no kingdom as yet but received power as kings one hour with the beast now this man has 42 months to do his dirty work 42 months before the Lord comes and destroys him but in those 42 months three and a half years it will be a time of turmoil and bloodshed and death and dominion and dictatorship the ten horns speak of those ten kings who will be over those ten confederated nations i think they're probably england france germany austria italy spain portugal slovenia romania bulgaria and probably greece here the antichrist arises out of the ancient roman empire and he subdues three other countries in europe along with them first the antichrist will conquer that ten nation european federation the first three and a half years of the tribulation sees the antichrist ruling all of europe secondly the antichrist will conquer the world this is not a little local thing this is worldwide he will be a gentile 
Revelation 13, 3, and all the world wondered after the beast and worshiped the beast. Say, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? We shall see the Antichrist as a world ruler. He makes a seven-year covenant with Israel, but breaks it after three and a half years. In order to accomplish this, the Antichrist has to control all the money in the world by promoting a cashless system. A cashless system. He cannot take over the world unless he takes over the monetary system of the world. And that's his first step. The Antichrist is a beast. He will be in control. And he causes all small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And no man can buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. He will implement a cashless society. Don't forget those two words. Cashless society. Whenever you see cashless society, look up because on the horizon, Antichrist is coming. Step number two. He will have control over every sale and every purchase. Cash must be eliminated. There will be a record of every transaction. He must thoroughly eliminate all cash for a cashless society. Step four, everything will be done electronically. Keep that word in mind, electronically. No cash, just electronic transfers. Every person will have to have an ID. I'll get into that a little bit more. Today we're witnessing the birth of the electronic world. A world of fax machines and personal computers, ATM machines, ATM machines, and automatic banking sy systems and machines, which tell us in a matter of seconds if our credit card has been pushed over the limit or how much we have that we can spend. The greatest problem facing these cashless planners is to make sure that a person with a smart card in his pocket is a person to whom it rightly belongs. So he can't use someone else's card. Step number six, since the people sometimes lose their credit cards and their ID cards, the government will have to move to a more drastic system of identification. In the Hughes Aircraft Company in California, they have a syringe implanted disponder a tiny microchip the size of a grain of rice is simply placed under the skin and when you take that microchip under the skin of your right hand or in your forehead that is your doom in the eighth place with this microchip implanted in your body your body becomes your ID. Step nine, a worldwide police force under the Antichrist will pick you up wherever you are. You cannot run away and hide. Now the implementation has already begun for a cashless society. I want to show you that. In your bulletin, you have something that says banks move forward on cashless payment system. On the back side, it says GSB invests in technology to support cashless society. Did you notice that? The cashless society is necessary for the Antichrist to overcome the world. He has to control the monetary system. And to do that, he has to get rid of cash. In America, a year ago, there were grocery stores that refused to take cash from groceries. They said, we won't accept cash any longer. 
I have a letter from a friend of mine in India. He's a missionary. And this is what he wrote to me this week. The present government has implemented a program, this is in India, where they are seeking to register all of India, 1.3 billion people, and requiring each person to use a biometric card. They are also seeking to implement a program whereby all of India will be cashless and eventually each person will be required to have a computer chip inserted into their hand. The laws regarding the biometric card will have a negative impact upon our ministry. I want you to understand what these laws will require in a cashless society. A biometric registration requires, number one, a picture of your face, a retina, number two, scan of both eyes, and thirdly, all ten fingers are fingerprinted. Then, all of that information is stored on a chip inserted in a biometric card. Without the biometric card, a person cannot have, <clears throat> number one, he cannot have a bank account. Number two, he cannot own a cell phone. Number three, he cannot have an internet service. Number four, he cannot have a driver's license. Number five, he cannot have a voter registration. Number six, he cannot have a passport. Neither can a person travel by train or by air. Right now, the deadline for every citizen in India is to have a biometric card. The date is March the 31st, 2018. March the 21st, 31st. That's just right around the corner. Every person, every citizen must have the card. And the card goes from a card to a chip in your body. At this present time, he writes, phone suppliers and banks are telling their customers that a biometric card is required to continue their service with the bank. It is a lie, but many are fearful of the government and are registered. There is a people there, I won't name them, for the missionaries' sake, who were tricked by their state government in the register. They were told that their paper ID was obsolete and would no longer be accepted and that they needed new documentation. Believing the government, they all registered for their biometric card. An individual he mentions here has a passport, but his family does not. And now they cannot get a passport until they are registered and have a biometric card. At this time, some ATM locations are requiring a fingerprint to enter into the room where the ATM machine is located, and then the person is required to agree to register for the biometric card. Avoiding these places and seeking older ATM locations is running out of options. <clears throat> now what are we looking at? A cashless society, and that's spreading all over Europe and America and everywhere. Why do we want a cashless society? It's paving the way for the Antichrist. Now I'm going to give you a way out, if you will take it, so that you will never see this Antichrist, you will never know him, and he will never lay a hand on you. But you have to do what I tell you to do. And before I do that, I'm going to finish some facets of this crazy wild beast that's going to be turned loose on the world. He will be an intellectual genius. He will be possessed of extraordinary intelligence. Daniel chapter 7 verse 8 says, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man. Verse 20 speaks of his eyes again. 
This refers to his mental ability, his intellect, his cleverness, his uncommon wisdom. And in Daniel 7.20, he's represented as a horn that has eyes. It is a double symbol. A horn prefigures strength. Eyes speak of intelligence. This mastermind will captivate the educated world. They will fall at his feet in adoring worship. His marvelous store of knowledge, his acquaintance with the secrets of nature, his superhuman powers of perception will stamp him as an intellectual genius of the first magnitude. The intelligentsia of our world will adoringly bow at his feet and applaud him for his genius. Then in the sixth place, he will be an oratorical genius. He will be a man of eloquence. Daniel 7, 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. He will be a wizard of words. He will surpass the lost the names. He will have a perfect command of the flow of languages. In Revelation 13, 2. His mouth is declared to be the mouth of a lion. A symbolic expression of telling of the majesty and the awe-inspiring effects of his voice. His ability as an orator will stand in front of the world's people and galvanize them into a mighty force. When he spoke, Adolf Hitler began slowly and little by little he galvanized them into an accelerating volume accelerating his speech until at the end he would be standing on his toes screaming by then the audience would be in a frenzy screaming and clapping their hands and ready to do anything Hitler asked them to do he will be a religious imposter according to Revelation 13 7 all nations kindreds and tongues that's everybody, will worship the Antichrist, the beast. His religious policy is very simple. Take his number into your body in a little micro computer chip that will remain in your hand or die. He will behead anyone who refuses the mark of the beast. Let me say that if you are here and you are unsaved this morning, and the rapture takes place and you wonder where everybody went, then you'll know that Christ has come for his people, raptured them out of the earth, and then that tribulation period will begin and you will have been left behind. And you will go through the tribulation period and you will take the mark of the beast. If you refuse, he will have you beheaded. He will bring back the Gilead team. And you have only one way out. And I'm going to tell you now what that is. If you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, repent of your sins and turn to Him and follow Him, He will save you. And when the rapture takes place, if you're still living, He will lift you up out of this earth. You will not see the Antichrist except from the balcony of heaven. We will know from heaven what this Antichrist is doing down here. The Bible has made that very clear to us in Bible prophecy. And this time is coming closer and closer day by day. I showed you that today in all the nations they're instituting the cashless society. What does that tell you? It tells you Antichrist is getting ready to take power. That Jesus is getting ready to come for us and rapture us out of the world. So we'll be safe with him. But if you're left behind it's not likely that you will repent. It's more likely that you would take the mark of the beast to save your own life. But when you take the mark of the beast, you consign yourself to eternal perdition. 
What you actually do when you take the mark of the beast, you're saying, I know to do this will send me to hell, but I'm going to do it because I want to live a little bit longer under the Antichrist before I die. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be here when this takes place. The cashless society is looming on the horizon. It's going to be implemented everywhere. It's being implemented in India right now. And in the papers that I gave you, and I'm not going to mention this because I don't want to get in any trouble. If you look at your papers, you'll see that we are now in a cashless society. That is, the coming events cast the shadows before them. It's not here yet, but it could be here tomorrow. It's on its way. And this cashless society is being implemented everywhere. Read your papers. Take those home and read them. Study them. I copied them out of your newspaper. This is not some dream of mine. I've given you the Bible for it. The newspapers have confirmed it. You need to take action. You need to know what's happening. And you need to prepare yourself. How many of you have seen the news articles about the wildfires in Ventura, California? Any of you see that on the on the news. It's about to burn up. My son sent an email and said he and his wife jumped into their car and drove down the hill from the house where they live and drove through the fire and just barely made it out. We live in a world of danger. A world of turmoil. And the, the thing that's coming upon this world is so unspeakably horrible. I do not have the tongue to be able to delineate it to me. I don't have the capacity to show you how terrible it's going to be. And it's not very far away. Now suppose my son in Ventura, California, would have said, well, uh, let's sleep a little longer. Maybe another half hour and then we'll go. He wouldn't have got out alive. He drove through the fire to get out. Suppose a man is told how Jesus died on the cross for his sins, was buried and rose again and is coming again. And the man says, well, I know something's coming, but I'm not ready. I'm not in any hurry. That man will be left behind. He'll be left behind. He'll take the mark of the beast. But the man listening to me this morning, or the woman, or the boy, or the girl, that says, I don't want the mark of the beast on me. I don't want the Antichrist to own me. I don't want to die under the terrible tribulation period and the reign of the Antichrist. I don't want that. I want to be saved. I want Jesus to take away my sins and give me a new heart and a new life. And I want to know that I'll not be one of the Antichrist subjects. I'll not be one of his henchmen. I'll reject him and choose Jesus. Now that's the one way out for you if you're not saved. If you're saved, then this doesn't apply to you because you'll be caught up to be with the Lord. But if you're not saved, I have warned you. Don't be caught unawares. Read your newspapers. They're telling you about it. Read your Bible. It tells you about it. And wake up and save yourself from the Antichrist. May God enable you 
to go home today and get down on your knees and repent of your sins and ask Jesus to come into your heart and to save you. And he said, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. You can be saved. You don't have to go through the turmoil of the tribulation period. Read the book of Revelation. That's what it's all about. Read it. And be wise. And turn to Christ while there's still time. Let's stand together, please. Let me read one more verse. I have just a minute. Revelation 19.11. Here's the conclusion. This is the coming of the Lord. And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Now his mouth, this is Jesus, goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. These are nations that are worshiping Antichrist. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Jesus is going to be the world ruler in a good sense. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, and with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. That's what's going to happen to the Antichrist in 42 months after the rapture takes place. But I told you, there is only one way of escape. And that way is to turn to Christ while you still can. And you have to decide, do you want to live under Christ or under Antichrist? Do you want to be alive in Christ or dead through the Antichrist? You have to make a decision. What will your decision be? Please take my advice if you're not saved. And get down by your bed tonight. And repent of your sins and ask Jesus to save you. And he will do so. That's the one way out. I hope you will take it. And to you who are Christians, don't let it bother you. He's going to take you to glory. If what we believe the Bible says is true, and we know it is, that's your way out. Let's stand and be dismissed in prayer. Brother Jim, dismiss us please in prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us through our pastor, Lord, and helping us to understand what the future holds for us, Lord. And uh, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that, uh, to be with you, Lord, having you in our hearts and in our minds, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I ask you, Lord, for your guidance in the coming days, Lord, that you would help us to be focused more upon you, Lord, and not upon the world. I ask you, Lord, to guide us and protect us. We ask these things in Christ Jesus' name.